Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we're going to be having a look at the Bronker by BB Customs. Now, this is obviously a console-friendly Bronco mud truck, and the story behind this thing is that basically it was a private mod that was in development at one point, and it was near release, but according to uh, BGamer on Mod.io, it almost made its way to release and then didn't get released, and then now later on, it ended up actually getting released along with the re-release of all of his other mud trucks. As I am filming this video, it's not yet on the console mod browser, but as far as uh, the history goes with these trucks and the fact that they were normally able to make it to consoles pretty easily, I don't think this one is going to have any issues making it to consoles pretty quick. So let's go ahead and head straight into the customization, and then we're going to go out to the out to the rig that we have outside that's prepped and ready to haul this thing to the mud. So engine-wise, we have actually, wow, all right, we have a 383 stroker, and that is the only option. Gearbox, you get one option. Suspension, wow, you get one option. Tires-wise, you get a little bit of selection, though. You have 46s, and you actually have a different set of 46s as well. These are more of like a checkmark tire uh, tread pattern. Then you have 44... Ooh! Whoa, okay, that's a different kind of... Whoa, that's a different kind of setup. So you've got paddle tires in the back and kind of like a mud terrain looking tire in the front. Like, not, you know, not a super aggressive mud terrain either. That's a very interesting setup. It's almost like a... It's almost like a sand slash drag setup. I might be off the mark on that one, but I definitely want to see what that setup is all about. And I'll probably use dev tools to swap out the wheel and tire setup uh, once we get out to sort of the mud pit area later on. Now, I think I'm going to go with these right off the bat. And then we have an offline toe strap winch. And then frame add-ons wise, we've got a toolbox with 5,000 repair points. We've got a bed cap, which can be added or removed. We have fuel cans and an LED light bar. So we're going to go ahead and put the light bar on and the bed cap I'm going to leave off for now. Although I'll probably add it later on once I'm outside of the garage just to see how it looks. We have a few custom wheel choices, but we can't currently look around the vehicle in the garage. So let's see. Whoa, these colors do look really, really good though. There's a lot of shine to the paint. Now, dude, the freaking color list is massive, although some of them don't seem to work. Um, it, it's almost like the color list has been copied over twice. Um, that might be something that'll get fixed a little bit later on, but I gotta say, I really like this almost gold color. Now, I like, I really like the green. I really like this green in particular because there's a lot of shine to it. There is a tremendous amount of shine to it. Let's fire this thing up, see what it sounds like, and then get it up on the trailer. Holy crap, that's loud. That is insanely loud. I don't know if that's coming across as loud as it sounds, but it is ridiculously loud on my end. Holy smokes. I decided to use the shorter gooseneck uh, with the lifted suspension and the larger tires. It seemed like it would be a much better fit for this particular application, but I gotta tell you, even with the lifted suspension and the bigger tires on this gooseneck, it was... Um, it was still not high enough for Rebel TRX's uh, International CXT. So we're going to go ahead and fire this thing up and we'll get it out to the mud pit. But listen to how much quieter this is than that freaking Bronco mud truck. Wow. Cargo pack trucks and trailers. That's a little bit of a change there. That's pretty sick. Let's go ahead and get it packed and we'll get the ramps up. Come on. There we go. Sometimes those ramps are a little bit weird. All right, so let's go ahead and get you out to the mud pit, and we'll see what this thing can do. Now, I'm sure it's going to be fast. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that it's going to be extremely fast. But also, once we get out there, I can't forget to go through the other wheel options using the dev tools because, once again, it doesn't let you spin around the vehicle in the garage when you're choosing wheels. And when you're choosing wheels, it's kind of important to be able to see what wheels you're choosing, you know, so you can actually know which wheels you're choosing. And that's not a dig at the mod at all. That's just kind of like a personal thing. Like, I like to be able to look around my vehicles in the garage. So let's go ahead and throw this thing at a high so we can carry a little bit more pace. It should be able to maintain it. I mean, we've got the top spec engine in it, and we also have the highway transmission. So once it starts to get some momentum behind it, it should be fine. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't flip this thing over or flip it off of the trailer. I do have the front weight on this thing, though. So the fact that I have the front weight on it is definitely, definitely helping keep that front axle down, especially going up the hills. Yeah, if you take, if, if you, if you carry your momentum into the hills, you'll be fine. But like, whoa, that was sketchy. That was really close. Got the entire rear axle off the ground. I would prefer to not get the entire rear axle off the ground. Like, you know, if we can if we can help it, if we can avoid it, it would probably be a good thing to avoid. Almost there. 
Gonna try not to smash it into the gate like I did the last time I brought something out here, but, you know, sometimes, like, <laughs> sometimes vehicles meeting the gate of this uh, particular mud park is sometimes just something that happens. I'm not sure why. It's, uh, it doesn't happen often, but when it does... All right, let's go ahead and pull this thing up. And we'll get the ramps down. This time I've actually remembered to put the ramps down before I shut the truck off. So that's good. So let's go ahead and swap over back into the Bronco. We'll fire it up and get it off of the trailer. Once again, I mean, oh my god. The freaking exhaust sound. Now, it is probably pretty realistic though because literally the headers would be exiting right out of the fenders so if you're judging it based off of what it would be like in real life i mean yeah it'd be really insanely loud in real life so i do want to go ahead and look at some of these other wheel options real quick and while i do that i am going to shut the engine down so let's see what we can do in terms of hmm so okay so you've got a chrome deep dish wheel that actually looks pretty good this is, oh, I actually kind of like these, like big blocky spoke wheels, and then the ones that we had before. I might run, I actually might run these. These look pretty sick. Now, with that being said, though, there is obviously the option of those rear paddle tires, and I really want to see how that does, particularly on the hill climb. But we'll stick with these for now, and we'll go with these wheels. And before we do anything else, we're going to throw it straight into the mud and see if it can basically just blast across the entire thing in high. Because remember, yeah, if you look at the gear selector, it has automatic, reverse, neutral, and high. There are no low ranges to this thing. Let's throw it into this mud pit first and see how it does go. Dude, that's super controllable. That is insanely easy to drive. Super controllable. Wow. Yeah, as long as you vary the throttle input, you'll be okay. You just have to make sure that you don't plunge it headfirst into some really deep stuff. This is about half throttle, and it actually really likes it there. Oh, there it is. Gonna try to have to find, uh, like, the, the balance of where it likes to be in relation to how thick the mud is. And it, it really like the, uh, the, like the shallower stuff, but like when it gets into some really, really deep mud, you definitely have to be a little bit more careful with your throttle application. Let's see how it takes to a jump. Whoop. All right, let's get the turn around real quick. This jump you can't really send extremely fast unless you want to go for a massive rollover. Oh, it stays super solid in the air, though, and you can literally just ride a wheelie right out of it. That is extremely easy to control. It almost has kind of a kind of an RC truck vibe to it in a way when you drive it. All right, easy. And that right there, that's just full throttle. It, when the mud gets a little bit more shallow, you can go full throttle and not worry about it. That's a really, really simple truck to drive. Let's see how it responds to a backflip. I've never tried this before, so I have no clue if it's actually going to like it or not. And full send. You know, actually, with how close it came to being able to do a backflip, I figure it could do one. I honestly, like, I bet it could do one if all the factors kind of contributed together in the right way. I bet it could actually do a full-on, just proper backflip. Now, let's actually swap over to that paddle tire setup real quick. Now, I know this is kind of a weird-looking thing, but let's see what happens when you just go on a full, hard launch. Let me move, actually, because I don't think it's going to get the grip it needs right there. Let's go. Oh, it, it does a mini wheelie. That's actually really sick how it does like a miniature wheelie right off the ooh, right off the line. I do want to take it over to the hill climb with this setup, though, because I feel like all that added grip in the rear is definitely going to help us make our way up the uh, make our way up the hill climb. I do want to see how it does if I turn the all-wheel drive off. And I wonder if that's how you're supposed to use that rear paddle tire setup. Whoa. It is weird because you can feel it gripping up in the back. Oh, yeah, there's the wheelie. It definitely wants to do a wheelie, that's for dang sure. Oh, not reverse, thank you very much. Come on. Yeah, it jumps into it when you give it gas. Like, if you're if you're in just rear-wheel drive, holy smokes, does it want that wheelie. Come on, come on. Wow, okay, nope. Nope, nope. Yeah, if you're trying to go up the hill climb in just rear-wheel drive, it starts to want to do backflips. I'm like, I wanted you to do backflips over by the backflip ramp, not over here. 
Wow, it's super easy to control going up this hill and oh, in all-wheel drive until you hit a bump. And then you got to be real easy with it. I'm trying to kind of get it back in a straight line. It's starting to dig now. Maybe if I put it in like first gear. There we go. And then when you start to kind of like try to get it to feel for traction on the hill, it gets a little bit upset. Like it's wanting to find it in the rear, but not so much in the front. Oh, there we go. Oh, I wanted to start digging. I was like so close to getting it to make its way up the hill. It wants to so bad. It really does want to so bad. But like when you lose that momentum, it really just kind of decides that it's done. Let me turn you around real quick without flipping you over. You know what? I kind of realized that backing it down the hill is probably the smartest decision. You know, I was like, if I turn it around up there, it's probably going to be really, really upset with me. All right, one more. Actually, instead of going up that way, let's try going up this way. We don't really have any sand out here to test these paddle tires on because, like, obviously, obviously you'd use these mostly in a sand environment in real life, but, like, we don't really have any sand on this map, so we're making do with the sections that we do have. Come on, momentum, come on. Nope, nope, nope. It's staying in it, but it's like, it gets right about to the point that it did last time, and then it starts just spinning there. Man, all right, so I tell you what, let's head back down to the bottom, but before we do that, I'm gonna switch up the wheel and tire setup one more time to the first mud tires that it comes on, and we'll swap it to these chrome deep dish wheels now. Turn it around. Well, actually, I'm impressed with the center of gravity on this thing. The tuning is awesome for it to be able to just turn around right there on such a steep, like, sideways slope and not flip over. That's really impressive. All right, let's see if I can get it through the gate without smashing into the gate. I know that that sounds like a very easy task, but remember, I've hit that gate before with uh, a lot, um, a lot less, uh, a lot less momentum. All right, repair and refuel. Let's make our way around to the back section of the map here because there's not only a really good racetrack, but there's also a couple of sections that'll really test how well it actually lands after jumps and continues to carry on its momentum in the mud itself. Here we go. It really loves to pull that front axle off the ground. I, I absolutely love how it does that. Come on. Ooh, oh, no. Off balance. Off balance. Let it settle. Yeah, I had to let it settle after that. I had a really bad landing. There we go, turn into that. As long as you're off the throttle when you land, you won't really risk flipping it over. The, the times you'll risk flipping it over are when you land and you're off center and you're on the throttle and it like hooks the ground, that's when it'll flip over. Oh, it, dude, it just chewed its way through that one. Holy crap. Dude, this thing rips. This thing absolutely freaking rips. I love it. I do want to go ahead and throw the, let's see, I want to throw the cap on it because I feel like, I feel like it'll look, oh wow, that actually really changes up the look of the thing. Let me know in the comment section below whether you'd be running this, uh, running this rig with or without the cap. I kind of like it without personally, but I mean, at the same time, like at the same time, if you had the cap on, then, you know, maybe your passengers in the back wouldn't be constantly sprayed with mud. I mean, even if you did have passengers in it. So, oh, that was actually a really good landing as well. It's super predictable. Like, once you get into a flow with it, it's extreme. Whoa! The second I say that, and yet, and yet, dude, you saw how crazy, like, off balance that was, but, like, it was still able to gather it up. That's extremely impressive. Like, no joke, insanely impressive job on this thing. I really do enjoy driving it. Now, let me know in the comment section down below, not only what you guys thought about the video, but what you guys thought about the truck itself. And if you would like to see more, make sure that you subscribe and turn those notifications on. And I will see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.